Hey guys, Middle Jesus here. Now I'm sure you were just as excited as I was when Sony first announced that they're going to be releasing a PlayStation Classic. This is going to be Sony's first foray into this mini micro classic market. And I was pretty pumped. I mean, this was going to be the very first 3D based classic system. And I mean, honestly, there are a ton of great games that came out on the PlayStation 1. So like most of you, I was pretty excited to uh, to pre-order this thing, which I did, even though when they first announced it, there was really only, I believe, two games that they were releasing at that time. Okay, you know, nothing too spectacular, but again, I had faith. There are so many great games for the PlayStation 1. And then, what, it was like a month ago, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago, they announced the full 20 game lineup that is going to be included on it. And I think, like most of you, I was uh, <laughs> underwhelmed. Some great games were on that, but also some kind of games that made you just question, what were they thinking? Because here's the deal, and you guys know this, is that you know when Nintendo released the NES Classic and the Super Nintendo Classic, well, they packed those with amazing games. You could argue that they were some of the best games on those systems. And so those classics are a great representation of that system. It's like a snapshot in time. And then Sony releases their 20 games that they're going to put on it. And I think most of you would agree that that is not the 20 best games that define the PlayStation 1. But again, I kept my pre-order. I kept the faith. I was like, no, 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 no. I was still hyped out. You know, I was still hyped up. I was like, no, 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 this is going to be awesome. I think it's going to be cool. And then in the last couple days, a lot of big media outlets and websites have got hands on time with it in previews. And I watched pretty much all of those videos. And I got to say, my enthusiasm has pretty much waned almost completely to the point where basically I have canceled my pre-order because I'm just not feeling it. You know, I mean, the truth is that this device, while it has a handful of games that I think I'd actually play, but there are a bunch that I just know I won't. And actually, I think it was the GameSpot video where they were going through the list. They played most of them and they got to Cool Borders 2 and they're like, you know, how how many of you are ever going to play this game? And the answer, and, and, and when, when he said that, I was like, yeah, I'm never gonna play that game. <laughs> I mean, I like snowboarding games and I'm never gonna play that one because it's just, it just doesn't hold up that well. I don't know, it's like, you know, that that's just one example, but I started looking through the list. I'm like, yeah, I mean, how many of these games actually am I going to play? <sighs> and so, I think it's just with a heavy heart that I just kind of have to admit that this is not Sony's best offering in a classic, in a, in a PlayStation Classic. It, it kind of breaks my heart. Right off the bat, where is Crash Bandicoot? I mean, right off the bat, I was like, this is a huge omission. I mean, the Crash games defined the PlayStation 1. It was the unofficial mascot. So it's weird that they didn't include this. Now, I, I have a theory as to why they didn't, but they should have had Crash Bandicoot 1, 2, and 3. Maybe not all three of them, but then put on either the second or the third ones because those games are great. Now, you could argue that they did this because, well, you know, the remastered trilogy is out and people are pumped for that. I don't buy that argument at all. And we're gonna get into that with other titles that I recommend too, because again, yes, they were remastered, but the whole point of this console is to be able to go back and go back in time and re-experience these games as they were. So I know that's debatable, but I'm just saying it would have been really cool uh, to include the Crash games. Now they included Final Fantasy VII, which is great, but wouldn't it be amazing if they also would have included Final Fantasy VIII and IX? That would have been super cool. A lot of people haven't played these in a long time and that I think that just would have been amazing. And then you need some racing games, which of course they have Ridge Racer and also Destruction Derby to a certain degree there, but where the hell is Wipeout? I mean, come on. <laughs> Wipeout was one of the best-selling games on the PlayStation 1. 
A lot of people played it for the first time there. Obviously I did as well. This should have been there. And then also too, I, I don't understand. Like Gran Turismo, one or two. And by the way, I would probably choose the second one. I think it's just that much better, but Sony could have licensed that. I don't know why they didn't. This, there's so much content here as well. I mean, again, the value would have been killer. What were they thinking? Seriously, no Tomb Raider. Now I have the second and third one here, but most people played the original Tomb Raider on the PlayStation console. Not 100% sure why they didn't do this. I mean, maybe they had problems licensing it. I don't know, it's so bizarre, but a lot of these games are licensed and available in the PlayStation Store where you can download them on your PlayStation 3 or your PlayStation 4 or your Vita. So again, I'm not 100% sure. They should have included a Tomb Raider 1, 2, or 3, whichever one. Now let's talk about Resident Evil. Obviously, I think Resident Evil is a really good choice for this. I mean, a lot of people played it originally on the PlayStation 1. That makes total sense. However, I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Wouldn't it be really cool to have people be able to play this on your brand new PlayStation Classic, see the original, you know, get a feel for that nostalgia. And then also very soon after get the remake. I mean, that to me just seems like perfect marketing. I think that would have been very cool. Again, I'm not poo pooing the fact that they put the original on there. That's great. I'm just saying, I think it would have made more sense to put the second game on there. I think that would have been awesome. Okay. Those are some of the more obvious titles that really should have been included on that. But these are the pipe dream games. These are the ones that I think if Sony would have included on it, would have probably piqued more people's interest. So let's go ahead and start with Silent Hill. I think this would have been a really cool addition because I don't think many people remember playing this game. And again, it's, it's an awesome survival horror game on the PlayStation 1. It should have been there. Obviously they wanted to include a first person game on there. I guess that's probably why that they put Rainbow Six, but Rainbow Six is, it's not gonna be very fun for a lot of people because again, you don't have those dual analog sticks on there. So it's gonna be very hard to control. Instead, they should have put Disruptor. Disruptor is a, I guess it's like a Doom clone. It's kind of like a uh, uh, Duke Nukem clone. But honestly, this game still plays really well on the PlayStation 1. It, it's, it's not a system seller, I get it. It's definitely a hidden gem, but this would have impressed a lot of people. Two more games that I think would have been really cool to include on this are the Fear Effect games. Fear Effect 1 and Fear Effect 2. These are such unique games. I believe they only came out on the PlayStation 1. It would have been something that I think people would have gone back and played and rediscovered on this thing and go, yeah, those are cool games. I mean, that, that could potentially be a system seller. And then let's talk RPGs because they obviously included Wild Arms and they also included Persona. And those are actually are pretty decent selections there. I think that people would be very happy with those. However, I would have replaced those with something different. And I would have replaced them with The Legend of Dragoon because this is a, it's hard to say it's a hidden gem because I do feel like people are rediscovering it, but it was exclusive to the PlayStation 1. I believe it was actually released by Sony to compete with Final Fantasy. It's a really well-made, high quality RPG. Not many people have played it. I think people would have been very excited to see it on the system and potentially would have rediscovered it for, you know, or discovered it perhaps for the first time. And the other one is, by Squaresoft, is Vagrant Story. Uh, another game which I think is probably considered maybe a hidden gem. It certainly doesn't come up very often when people are talking about uh, JRPGs back in the day, but it's an amazing game. I think that they probably could have licensed it from Squaresoft. I think that it's a game that deserves to be discovered. Had they included it on here, it, you know, perhaps it would have found a new audience. Speaking of Squaresoft, a game that I think should be in every PlayStation 1 collection is Einhander. This is an amazing 3D shooter. And again, it came out exclusive on the PlayStation 1. It's getting really expensive to, to buy a physical copy these days. And it's just fantastic. And again, I think that this would be a game, instead of like say Mr. Driller or something like that, or Intelligent Cube, which again, don't get me wrong, those games are fun. I played them both. 
But if you were to ask me, this is the game that would get people really excited if it was included on there because this is going for 50, 60, $100 sometimes. If it was included on this, I think that would be very cool because more people could potentially play it. So yes, I've canceled my pre-order. It's with a heavy heart that I do so, but honestly, for $100, for only 20 games, I just feel like Sony kind of phoned this in. I really do. I feel like that they, they're kind of just doing the bare minimum. I mean, don't get me wrong. I actually think that the console, from what I've seen in the videos, actually looks very cool, but it's just not a good value. And honestly, I'm probably not gonna play most of those games. And, you know, again, I think part of the issue here is that Nintendo has set the precedence. You know, for potentially a little bit less money, you get more games and better games on their classic editions. So I think Sony phoned it in. I hate to break it to you. You know, I hate to, I hate to say it, but uh, you know, my, my only thing is, is that Perhaps it'll be hacked. So I'm gonna watch the I'm gonna watch the forums and the news very closely when it comes out and see if it's hacked. Because I think if it's hacked and you can kind of build up your own personal collection, actually make a real, you know, top 20 games for the PlayStation One, I think that would be awesome. Because uh, I actually do take these classic consoles with me when I go to, when I travel. It's really nice to go into a hotel room, plop down these little classic consoles and you just have all these games instant on a TV no matter where you go. So, uh, yeah, that's why, I, that's why I like them. That's why I use them. So, I don't know, guys. Am I crazy? Should I, uh, well, I, I've already canceled my pre-order, so it's too late now. <laughs> but am I crazy? Let me know down in the comments below. Tell me if you are a little bit disappointed as well, or, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you're happy with the game selection. Maybe you're looking forward to it. I'd love to know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care.